you have any special talents? <laughs> These parts which you are looking right now have been the heart of this channel for more than a year. The i7 can be overclocked to 5.1 GHz so long time using will not be a problem with me. Despite that, I really want to try something new which is why I switched to Ryzen 7 2700X from AMD. I really want to switch to Micro ATX but there is none available. To purchase for x470 platform that's why i decided to stick with asus mini itx for the cpu my original plan was to buy a used one to save money but i saw a guy sold this for just 270 and i hop in and it's time for me to say goodbye to my dear old friend Compared to Z270i, this one has more RGB, less USB port, but all of them are USB 3.0, no USB-C, and it has one USB 2.0 header, while the Z270i has none. You can clearly see the ball only has two VRM heatsink, one at the IO shield and another one is combined with the M.2 heatsink while all ASUS ITX boards for Intel have 3. That happens because of AMD's stupid cooler layout. I really hope one day AMD and Intel unify their cooler layout. Because you can see here, even with the AMD FM3 bracket, I cannot install my H100i V2. This is my first time ever to open an AMD CPU box. The box is huge because it's come with a stock cooler, which is very nice compared to the first generation of Ryzen. The cooler already has thermal paste, so I don't have to put mine on. It's not only thick, but it also has RGB. Second gen Ryzen has a better RAM compatibility. I managed to use my RAM XMP without any problem. Still, it's not as good as Intel with a RAM overclocking. I tried to push it to 3466 MHz and it crashed. So no RAM overclocking, but for CPU overclocking, I faced another problem. When I tried to push it, my power supply made noises, which was very scary. Until I get a new power supply, I can only run this machine as stock. If that's the case, I would rather buy a B450 board instead of an X470. So new power supply then. I go with Thermotech iRGB power supply. If you are interested in Thermotech's RGB power supplies, you can buy other versions which are cheaper, but they cannot be controlled by software, and the fan effects are much more limited. This power supply has the same size as my current, so fitting on the test bench is not a problem. The number of ports here is just more than enough for me to use. And that mini USB port is used to control the fan speed and the LED effects. 
Thermotech is not the only one who does, but giving the customers a uh, bag to keep the unused cables is a very nice move. The thing that makes me prefer Thermotech power supply is flat cables. Flat cables are much easier to manage and it let routing underneath the motherboard possible. And they do look much fancier than those route thick cables you usually see. But today I want my test bench to look even better by using Antec sleeve extension cables. It comes with a bag of cable combs, one 24 pin, one CPU, two 6 pin PCIe, two 8 pin PCIe cables. These cables are very affordable and they do look really good. The red cable is the Silverstone PCIe extension cable and you can see the difference is like day and night. The Antex cables are much stiffer so they do look better when bent. However, the hardness and the extra length will be the pain in the ass. But challenge accepted. This is what my test bench looks like when I use a non-modular power supply. This is originally a laptop table, so this makes me very proud of my cable management skill. Here's the new look. Time to turn this shit on. Due to those extension cables, what underneath the test bench are now more visible, but I still think it looks great. To get more USB ports, I use velcro strap to stick one behind a monitor and another one underneath the table. Sorry for the cable mess, but it's outside, out of mind. Cause the USB 2 header is currently occupied by my cooler, I use a mini USB cable to connect to the USB 3 header. Thermotech DPS app lets me monitor how much power the system is currently consuming. Also, the uh, app allows me to control the fan speed of the PSU. With zero fan mode, I'm really missing the whoosh sound when I fire up the PC, and it barely spins under load. At the moment, iRGB is the only PSU whose lighting effects can be controlled via software. If you plan to buy Thermotech RGB power supply, you need to distinguish the difference between each version. With a new power supply, it's now safe to overclock. I push the CPU up to 4.1 GHz or A cores with 1.385 volts. For stability, it passed one hour with IDA64, but I could not call it a day. So I would try to uh, render a video with Adobe Premiere and see if it crashed or not. And I will let you know in the description. So we are reaching the end of this video, but here's the future. I plan to pull this, the GTX 1070 Mini from Kikapai and Ryzen 2700X inside this small form factor case, the Cougar QBX 
and if you are interested in how I reuse my old power supply with this case and manage those cables, consider subscribe to see the future video because I will use this case for occasional travel. Like I mentioned before, the 7700K did me just fine with uh, video editing and gaming, but I really don't want to stick with a dead platform. Switching to Ryzen also helped me earn a little bit cash. I got 345 by selling the i7 and the motherboard, $35 by selling the Red Prism cooler, and got a $20 bill by using the eBay bucks I earned from buying the CPU. Moreover, based on rumor, the next generation of Ryzen is very promising, and we will see in the upcoming 2019 CES. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.